So, throughout the tasks, you will have to deploy several machines, all right? So basically, in, the ta in task three, you will have one machine. When you finish from task three, you will have to switch off the machine of the previous task and then launch the new machine of the current task. So you will be just switching on, switching off current machines. Or if you don't do that, you will not be able to uh, work properly on the challenge. So let's start with the first task. So remember to um, pull up questions to answer. So let's jump right to the answers. So let me take this to the right. First thing we have, what is the host name of the target system? Don't forget that uh, we need to connect to the machine. So we have username Karen and password one. These credentials will not change throughout the uh, challenge, despite the fact that you will have to deploy uh, different machines for every task. All right, so let's skip down to the questions and now shift this to the right, starting with the machine. So connect SSH Karen at copying the IP address Oh, no, 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 wait. SH Karen, I forgot the N. And now we type in the password. All right, so we're in. So let's answer or let's take a look at the questions. What is the host name of the target system? What is the Linux kernel version of the target system? What Linux is this? What version of Python language is installed? What vulnerabilities seem to affect the kernel of the target system? So typical enumeration questions. The kind of questions that you have, that in order to answer, you have to do some enumeration on the system. And that is the precursor for a successful privilege escalation. All right, so to answer the host name uh, question, we type host name. And we receive the first answer. This is the host name of the machine. Next thing, the Linux kernel version. We have three ways to find this. The first one is cat etc issue. Okay, here we can see the name of the Linux system. Ubuntu, right? And this is the Ubuntu version. Ubuntu 14.04 LTS. Now, the kernel version, cat uh, pro version. Here we get the Linux version. Linux version 3.13.0.24 generic. And if you want to find any vulnerability for that version, you will use this version in Google or an exploit database. Now the next question is asking what version of Python is installed. So to find that, we can just interact or start Python. Basically, uh, we can, what we can do here, we can just type Python dash V. This will start Python, right? Maybe it is not the uh, tedious, tidiest ways to find the version. So as you can see, the Python version is 276. Control D to exit, or you can just type find dash find, use the find command to search all directories for Python files, let's say, Python. Uh, we forgot to, uh, yeah, we need to just redirect the output to the dev null, but we didn't do that. Anyway, control, let me exit. Okay, so let's take a look here. So as you, as you saw, the host name is here. This is the Linux version. The Linux name and this is the version of the Python installed. What vulnerabilities seem to affect the kernel of the target system? Now, you have the version here, right? You can take this and use search exploit. So on your, uh, let's split the view. So search exploit and you type in the name and type Linux. No results, that's fine. Let's use Google for that. Exploit. So if you click on the first link,
you will see before even if you do not want to click on the link you can see the CVE uh, number uh, but in order to be sure that this is the right CVE we have to click on that and read through the title Linux kernel 3 13 319 overlay of local privilege escalation and this is the CVE number which marks the answer for this question so this is the enumeration phase we understand now the host name understand the role of the machine understand the version of the, of the operating system and now we uncovered a vulnerability so now you're off this task task four automated tools let's check out the links to see what are the automated tools used to uh, save you time and find privilege escalation vectors in, instead of the manual method that we will be taking on in this video task uh, 5 now to start task 5 or I guess the task 5 no need to terminate the machine and start this one because task 5 is about exploiting the vulnerability we have just uncovered okay so the question is asking find and use the appropriate kernel exploit to gain root privileges on the target system what is the content of the flag all right so now we have a vulnerability right and now we have the exploit so you can just download the exploit to your machine i guess i have did that before let me download here see the name of the exploit so 37292 37292 just download it to your machine all right and use the following command gcc uh 37 this is okay no need for that so use this command to compile the exploit and this is your final file now next thing you do open python server sudo dash m oh sudo python dash m now we open a python server on my machine in order to be able to download the exploit to my target so here we check out on the target what directory we are in okay let's go to temp make sure we are on the writable directory and now we wget http let me check out the name or the address of my machine so this is my IP address what happened paste OFC the name of the exploit and we enter so we have downloaded the exploit now to the machine let's check out the permissions so OFC can be read and written for Karen let's give it execute permissions OFC and now execute OFC the exploit now is being run finished let's make sure that we have successfully escalated the privileges to the root ID and now we are the root on the system so that's the first way of escalating privileges looking for uh, the version of the target system and trying to find out an exploit for that version so finding the flag now cd home cd mat cd oh, cat flag one that is the flag one here okay next one using the sudo now let's uh let me check out if we need to terminate the machine uh, okay so what we're gonna do now we're gonna terminate this one all right and on task six start this machine okay so the credentials are the same username karen password one if you scroll down we see we have uh, four questions how many programs can the user karen run on the target system with pseudo rights so find out the number of programs and also the flag escalating the privilege on nmap and what is the hash of frank's password all right so now the machine is being deployed it's gonna take approximately 25 seconds so in the meantime 
let's go back clear what we have done here and stop the Python server now we will get ready for the new machine so sh current at 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, IP. <laughs> okay. So, yes, password 1. Okay. How many programs can the user Karen run on the target system with pseudo rights? So, the question is asking, right now we are Karen here. We need to find out if Karen can run uh, programs or some of the programs with sudo rights. For that, we have to issue sudo l. Using sudo l, we find that Karen can run find less nano as a sudo or, or with sudo rights. So the number of programs is three, right? Now, to find to be able to escalate the privileges using the given information or the given permissions of Karen, we will use a website called GTFO Pins. In this site, you are just any if you if are given some programs that you can run as sudo, just search for the program name here, and you will be able to do some privilege escalation if you have pseudo rights over the program or if you are able to manipulate the path variable and other stuff we will find out later but use this site, book it, make it in your bookmarks or save it in your bookmarks so checking out this we have find less nano let's use nano so nano and select sudo now we're giving a way to escalate the privileges with nano so first we type sudo nano nano is opened, that's fine next we type control r, control x so on your keyboard control r, control x now as you can see we switch to command mode command to execute this is the command, so copy that and paste it here Enter executing so now it has executed oh sorry so id oh, id now we have the root user simple as that finding the flag now cd home cd ubuntu cat flag 2.txt and this is your flag for this task okay Going back to the questions, so we saw that we have three programs we can run as sudo, the flag is this. Next one, how would you use nmap to spawn a root shell if your user had sudo rights on nmap? And this is how you do it, this is called the nmap interactive mode. And this is the command if you can run nmap as sudo with a privileged user, a uh, non-privileged user. What is the hash of Frank's password? Alright, let's take the, let's extract the hash of this guy so uh, why is this I guess it's my start menu okay so ls um, now cat etc shadow here we reveal all of the hashes for all users and this is the hash for Frank up until here one take that and submit it as an answer so now we are done with this task so now we learn the next way to escalate the privilege on Linux which is using the sudo rights switch off the machine and switch now to the next one task 7 sued start the machine so here in this task we escalate the privileges by searching for files or binaries that have the sued uh, bit set on them it means that these files or binaries are executed if you execute them they are executed as the owner so if the owner is root right they are executed as the owner 
or as root. These are some stuff if you want to read it. All right. So which user shares the name of a great comic book writer? What is the password of user 2? And what is the content of the flag? OK, let's some, do some cleaning now here. Clear. OK, SSH, Karen, at. Credentials stay the, stay the same, so this is the IP going down to the questions and now connecting. Yes. All right. Which user shares the name of a great comic book writer? So let's first understand who we are. We are Karen. I know that. Now, cat etc password. Let's look, look over the users. So Ubuntu and home Jerry Conway, Conway, Conway. And also we have user two, Karen. So the user that is requested in the question or mentioned in the question is this one. Next one, this is JDF Obins. We don't need that for now. What is the password of user two? All right, so here it means we have to do some privileged escalation in order to reveal the users, right? So now, going back here, now we will search for binaries or files that have the suit bit set and exploit them. So to do that, we use the find command, search all directories for files, and we specify specific permissions dash zero four thousand and then we type dash ls to list all of all of them and if there are any errors we output these errors to null so now we are being presented with all of the binaries that have the suit bit set it might it kind it might be an overwhelming list, uh, but that is in the game. You have to uh, just construct a way to be able to save time and select the appropriate binary or the right one that will get you there. So we're finished, and let's take this to the right. I guess um, we have to just do something about this. So let me just paste the command one more time. So mount at f user mount. Among these binaries, I'm going to save you time, all right? Check out the base64. If you go to GTFO bins, base64 and click on sewed you have a way to do that as you can see the first thing if you don't have it installed just uninstall it and now here we define a file so elf file equal to the file to read it means that we can manipulate base64 to read any sensitive file on the system in our case we want to read a user's password right so what we do now we type elf file equal etc shadow and next we execute the command here to reveal the content of the file uh, you might be right let's take this and take the rest of the command paste it so these are the contents of the file of the shadow file and these are the passwords user2 this is the hash of this user copy it and answer with it but it's asking what is the password of it so we can copy the hash and use john the ripper to crack the password so here we i have just did that this is user2 hash right use now john the ripper with the word is rock you and select user2 you will find out that the password 
what happened here. I guess I have to show because I have done this before. Let me check out user two. Okay. So this is what's the password. Password one, which is the same password as current, right? Okay, this is the password for this guy. Now check out the flag. So here, ls cd home. Let's see what is the flag three. Cd Ubuntu ls cat flag three dot txt. Permission denied. All right, let's not change the user to user two. And type in the password. We have just found ls cat flag 3txt jesus id okay yes right now we have escalated the privileges right but not in a complete way we have to do it. we have to root the system so again sudo dash l password one okay Let's do that again. Let's find out now with the user two, the uh, files or the binaries with suit bit set. One more time. Or what we can do actually, we can even use page 64 to view the file with no need to root the system. So just LF file, home, Ubuntu, flag 3.txt and then we execute so user bin is 64 and this is the content of the flag no need to do root so we're done with this task these are the answers terminate and now move on to the next one task 8 Task 8, we will use something called capabilities. Again, capabilities, sewed, pseudo on binaries can be manipulated using UTF OBS. So we're given the credentials and how many questions we have around four questions. The first one, no need to answer it. Next, we have how many binaries have set capabilities, what other binary can be used through its capabilities, and what is the content of the flag for. So here now we will escalate the privileges using the capabilities on the Linux on the Linux file system. Until the IP is shown, let's do some cleaning. So clear here, clear, and clear. Now SSH, the credentials are the same. Keep coming to GTO for this. Okay. Karen at and on time thank you very much all right connect yes so three questions how many binaries have set capabilities okay Okay, so we are logged in. ID current. Now to get the list of or do, to get the list of the applications or the binaries that have the capabilities set, we use a command get cap dash r and we search all directories. Alright. But don't forget, probably this command will result in so many errors. Don't forget to do or output or direct the output to sorry, direct the errors to um, dev not here now we get a clean list without any error for all of the apps that have the capability set and then we will see an appropriate application and use it here search for the application name with the capability to see here we have the capabilities here we can 
um, select that for the applications we have and then see a way to escalate the privileges all right so we started to get something user library linux gnu this is one Okay, it's the complete list. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six number of applications have the capability set. So now we have to use one, select one, and try to escalate the privileges with that one. So we have a view here. Let's search for a view. So view, capabilities. Do we have capabilities? Yes, we have. Click on that. So, this is what we have to do. Take this command. But, don't forget to change or put here Python 3. Or it will not work because the machine has Python 3 installed. So, let's make the modifications here and copy that. Paste, view command not found, all right, let's copy that and put the full path of view, home, you're going to view, hopefully it's going to work, ah, wait, okay, id, and you are the root user. Simple as that. Now, the content of the flag, ls cd home, cd ubuntu, ls cat flag for .txt. And this is your flag for this task. So, coming to the questions, how many binaries? We saw they were six. What other binary can be used through its capabilities? View. What is the content of the flag? We found out the content and finished. Terminate. Now next task nine, escalate the privileges through cron jobs. This task is kind of interesting. We have three questions to answer. Do some cleaning. SSH Karen at, oh no, here. So we have 45 seconds. So if you go over the tasks here, it's just explaining you the concepts and some examples for you to understand the concept of privilege escalation through cron jobs. Technically, we will check the cron jobs with etc cron tab and see the available cron jobs running uh, periodically. All right, select one that is vulnerable and just escalate the privileges. How many cron jobs, the flag content, and Matt's password. Probably in this task, we will need also to escalate to root file system. So this is the IP finally started. Connect. Take this to the right. So we're connected now. Let's now view the running cron jobs. So cat etc cron tab. Now we have four cron jobs running as the root user, as you can see. If you see cron jobs running as the root user, try to find ways or opportunities for a privilege escalation because these scripts will run as root. And if you're able to modify on one of them, you will be able to do whatever you want as the root user. So, we have slash antivirus, 
probably we will not have access to the root directory so forget about this one next one root antivirus.sh there is no path defined for this all right so this is a chance for escalating the privileges through the path environment variable but i'm not going to do that now because we will explain about the path environment variable in the next task the next one is root home carrying backup sh so here we have a script in the home directory of Karen so most probably Karen has write access over that script if we check that out home Karen back up sh and indeed Karen has write access over the script she can modify on the script which means we can put in the script whatever we want and it will run as root probably we will put, we will put some sort of bash reversal open a listener here I'm going to open it from now dash lvp4545 and receive the incoming connections as the root user last one root temp test.py so let's see what is in the temp directory so in the temp directory there is no script called test.py so probably the administrator has deleted the script but they forgot to delete the cron job so which means if we created now a script in this under the same name all right in the temp directory and the as the contents of the script we put some sort of python reversal it will run as the root system or the root user and you will be able to receive another reverse another reverse connection to your machine let's stick with this one it's the most appropriate for this task so now we head to home Karen launch nano back up with sh this is the script cd home admin one two three results zip dash r home admin download dot zip so it's zipping a file and downloading uh, zipping yeah it's zipping just seems like kind of backup script I know the name suggests that but sometimes you see scripts with names and the contents of the script suggests something else so that's why it's also also always a good idea to understand the contents of the script so we will need to remove everything here and let me grab a reverse shell from my machine Let's select bash reversal. Here, four five four five, and now the IP address of my machine is here. Change that and save it. That's it. Now wait for an incoming connection to your machine. I'm gonna wait around one minute for the connection to trigger, and we will receive it here on the right hand side hopefully so in the meantime let's see the questions how many cron jobs can you see we have four now what is the content of the flag we need the incoming connection and now what's my password also we need the connection to trigger to answer these questions So the connection is not coming, I guess, because the we didn't adjust the permissions on this. So let's give it execute permissions, back up with sh, and wait for now. See if it's gonna work. Okay, as you can see now, it worked. So we have the root user. Now we check out the flag. So id root cd home cd ubuntu ls cat flag and this is your flag for this task now what is mat password cat etc shadow first extract the hash of the user mat this is the hash right and then we can just exit no need for the uh, shell anymore ls put the uh, hash in a file called mat and a crack it with John the Ripper. 
So I'm going to use now join user2. Instead of user2, I'm going to use Matt because I've did this before. So I'm going to type Matt that's show. The password for Matt was 123456. So now we are off this task. Terminate. Next one, start the machine. So next one is about exploiting or escalating privileges through the path environment variable. And actually, in the last task, we could have we could have done that on the antivirus script if you remember that. But I just postponed uh, that to this task because here we will talk about this. So in this task, we will see uh, the questions. So we have three questions. And in order to you know get the flag, we have to escalate the privileges with the or using the path environment variable techniques. Technique. So clear here, do some cleaning. Now SH Karen as always, and now we check the IP of the machine, still booting up. So, take the IP now, paste, are you serious, one more time, oh, because the machine has not yet booted, so now it has booted, yes, password 1, so now we are logged in. Check out ID. Now we are carrying. Okay, so how do we go about finding out if we can exploit the um, path environment variable? So exploiting the path environment variable relies on the fact that you have to find out if there is a script running on the system which doesn't have the path environment variable set on the executable that is using in its content. Kind of vague, right? Let's demonstrate that in this scenario. So ls cd home cd who we are. We are current cd mat. All right, cd back cd mur d o c h. Okay, we have two here cd ubuntu. Okay, so on that directory, seems like we have a Python script and we have a binary. If we type file test, so it is an executable binary in Linux. And it seems that this binary is the binary that has been compiled after the script. Let's check out the Python script, nano thm.py. Okay. So this binary or this script seems like it is executing a binary called THM. And that's what it does. It is executing a binary called THM, that's it. So now how do we know that this script presents an opportunity for exploiting the path environment variable? As you can see, if there is no path defined for the script, it means the system will look in the path environment variable to find that executable. And the first match it finds, it will execute, right? So now, this is the mistake here in the script. There is no defined path for that. That's why now we can manipulate the environment variable path. We can insert our path, insert also a binary in our path, and let the script execute the binary from our path. How this? How is this done? So we first check out the environment variable. So you see we have user local s bin, user local bin, etc. So how about we add a temporary directory here, right? And then create a binary called THM and put it there. So the first thing we do, export path equals slash temp path echo path. As you can see, the temp directory now has been 
dependent to the very first of the environment variable. Now the system or Linux system when trying to find out the binary THM it will first look at the temp. Alright now if we cd to temp and create a directory create a file called THM. Before doing that the author has put a binary called test. Let's see what this binary does. Um, THM not found. So when I try to execute this binary, it's saying THM not found. And as I told you, this binary is seem or seems like uh, a compiled version of THM.py. Got test. I know this doesn't make sense. But yeah, I know that, but just trying. Um, ls la. So the this binary here has the suit bit set and can be run as root. Hmm. If we check out the term directory now. Okay. So our job here, our job is to create a binary under the name THM in the temp directory. So let's now create that binary cd temp nano THM. And it includes some simple code to change users. Let's see what do I have in here. Um, go to Linux. Uh, this one could work This one will work so we take the C code this will also this will switch the UID and GID of the user right to the root system or to the root user Now we have a binary called THM we will just now give it execute permissions And also we will give it the suit bit set So now, the THM is here. What's going to happen now? We will go back to the home directory and cd to mur ch and execute one of these. Now, when we execute one of these, the system will look for the THM. And since there is no path defined here, it will, ex it will pull the THM we just created in the temp directory and execute it as root. So now test temp.thm syntax error unexpected. Okay, let's try with the Python one. Python not found, there is no Python. Temp.thm syntax error unexpected. Let's. Um, Get temp THM Everything seems to be alright in this in the file. So it's saying we, I have I have got an error in my script. Nano temp thm void set uid set uid system. Did I remove this option? Maybe it's gonna work.
Okay, so the problem is the binary THN does not have the suit bit set. Uh huh. CH mode plus S THM. All right, now we execute CD home CD MUR DOH. And it's not working now. All right, let's create a different one. So RM THM. All right, and now we create a simple one. Let's try echo uh, only bin bash. And export that to THM. So CH mode 777 THM. All right. Now let's try to execute test file. It worked now. The reason for that. There was a problem in the previous code, not uh, an actual problem in the code, but in the execution of the test file. Um, so now it worked. And now we find the flag. So id root cd back cd mat cat flag 6.txt. And this is your flag for this task. Terminate. Deploy the next one. So the next one is the last task before the capstone challenge. The last task here is about NFS or network file share. So in this task, we will find another way or explore another way of escalating your privileges in the Linux file system by manipulating shared folders and remote management interfaces. So we have now here around four tasks or three actually. How many mountable shares, how many shares, and what is the content of the flag? Let's do some cleaning before we switch to this task. SSH Karen at. No need for the GTFO pins anymore. Yeah, we will keep it actually for the calf sound channel. I remember that now. Copy this. Okay, switch this to the right. So, we have been told that this machine is running shares. So, first thing to escrow the privileges or enumerate the shares, we can use show mount dash e and the IP of the machine. So we have around, or we have three shares. Share folder, temp, backup. Now, the issue is selecting the appropriate one and, mount to, uh, and mounting the appropriate one to your file system. So that's why on the machine we have just compromised. We use cat etc export to see the configurations of these shares. We look for the shares that have read write and no root squash if a share has read write and no root squash by the current user it means we can mount it to our system and create an executable in that share after creating the executable in the share we can execute the executable from the target machine and gain root access so in my case i selected the home ubuntu shared folder so su uh, do dash I, I'm going to escalate to my root to my machine now, switch to root system because I will need to deal with shares so I don't want any headaches for the permissions denied stuff cd ls alright cd mount okay, so I'm going to remove the junior pin all 
rm dash r grv and now we will create or I'm gonna mount directly now the I'm gonna mount this one to my machine so the command to do that what we will do here we will just type mount dash o now we will define the directory on my system to which the share will be mounted all right and also I will define uh, the target share which is this one so read write we have read write per uh, permissions on the share and then we put the IP address of the target machine followed by the path to the shared home Ubuntu shared folder and next slash MNC um, you guess what I guess we have to all right I know that I've just executed the command I want to save the command in the history so I'm gonna create a directory now called gr pen test and now execute the command again gr pen test so now we are mounting the shared folder to the machine to my to the pen test ls cd gr and now here we'll create a simple code to escalate the privileges on the target machine when we create this code here from my machine it will be synchronized or mounted or copied whatever you want to call it to the shared folder um, here so I can execute it from there let's see now if I have permissions on that folder home you want to shared folder okay nothing in there now until now Hmm. Okay. It seems like we don't have write permissions on that folder. Let me check backup. All right. Let's continue with this. Ah, Ubuntu ID. We have on Ubuntu actually. That's good. Because the shared folder is contained inside Ubuntu. All right, now in my machine, I'm going to create a simple C code, nano code.c, and just copy the code I have tried before. Combine code.c o code. Okay, so now. We switch to the target machine, go to home, cd ubuntu, cd shared folder. Now we have the code here, execute the code or give it execute permissions first. Uh, okay, let's do that here. CS mode plus x code. And now execute here. And now you are Karen. Oh, no. Didn't work. So I guess we forgot something. Okay. So here, I think we need to give it the suit bit set. Execute code again. And now you are the root user. So, questions? CD back. CD back for the flag CD mat ls cat flag 7.txt and this is the end of this task so how many mountable shares we found there were three how many shares have the null squash also three and this is the flag terminate and now the last challenge finally the capstone one so until the uh, IP is shown I'm gonna do some cleaning as well I'm gonna switch back to so here clear. Okay, I'm gonna click X, it doesn't work. Um, SH Karen at so in the last challenge, we're given 
totally different credentials. Leonard. Okay, let's use Leonard then. Leonard at. And the password. We're given a normal machine, Linux machine, where we will employ all of the knowledge we have gained so far to escalate the privileges. So let's see now the IP address will be popped up in a second. Not a second, actually. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Let's just get in. Uh, this is the password. Taking kind of some time, taking longer than expected. Let me check out the machine. So it is running. I don't know why we are not able to connect. <laughs> Since the machine did not boot up yet. Um, well, okay, paste. So long story short guys, in order to complete the capstone challenge, you will have to find the appropriate way to escalate your privileges. You may need to go over all of the techniques we have gained, we have learned so far. But in this video, I'm here to help you and save you time. So I'm not going to do some trial and error in this video on this challenge. I'm just going or stepping right to the uh, correct way, if you will. So the correct way is to search for the binaries that have the suit bit set. After we look through the binaries that have the suit bit set, we will find one that we can use, which is... You guessed that, right? It is base64. And again, what we will do here, we will use the base64 from the DTF opens, define a file to read as we have done before, base64. So it. So the file we would like to read is first the flag file. First, where is the flag1 file? cd home cd so we have the root flag flag 2 we only have the missy flag cd messy flag permission denied cd leo nard so i guess it is in the messy so we define a file here home missy flag 1.txt and then we use base64 to view the contents of that file No such file or directory. Huh. Let's search for that file then. Find all directories dash name flag one dot txt dash type file and now output or redirect everything to dev null. See what is that file? So we don't have such file, is that possible? ls cd leo nerd ls dash la uh, home permission denied Okay, 
So I think we need to think of another way to find that flag home. Let's see flag one.txt. Um, so it is not here as per the output. No such file or directory. Um, okay, I have another way. So let's use the L file here to just escalate our privileges, right? So now etc shadow. And now if we output the contents of the etc shadow, we can crack Missy's passwords and get into their folder. This is the hash of Missy. We take this, of course, take it. And now I have done this before. So ls, I have Missy hash here. Type John. Missy is password one. So now we switch to Missy. And finally, we break the castle. So now CD back, ls CD Missy. CD, uh, yeah, that's why it didn't work. So CD desktop, maybe in there, nope. CD back, try documents. Cat flag one, a type, I guess it's a Windows machine. Nope, cat flag one, not the XT. And this is the flag one. Next to find the next flag, we have to read the root machine. Or read the, go back. So we have this one root flag. In order to extract this flag, we can now go back and define a new file with base64. So a new file is here. Home root flag flag 2.txt and then execute. Paste, and this is the root flag, which marks the end of this challenge. I hope you enjoyed this journey, guys, and I hope you learned all of the things that you're supposed to learn from this challenge. I will update the Linux privileged escalation notes file with everything we have learned here. Of course, if you want to get all of the notes, you have to subscribe to the channel membership. So that's it for today and see you in the next video.